Welcome to this demonstration of Safwood Communications hosted predictive dialer. In this demonstration we're going to focus purely on the administration interface. So this is where dialer managers and administrators are able to set up campaigns, uh, add data uh, to those campaigns and also change the settings uh, for campaigns for administrators and for agents as well. There's a natural sequence of events uh, with this demonstration, which is we create a campaign. The idea there is if you're running uh, multiple uh, business types for outbound, such as you, know, you could be selling uh, PPI or RTA or solar or gas and electricity, whatever the product is, you can create multiple campaigns and then agents are able to log into the relevant campaign knowing what uh, product it is that they're uh, due to promote. And once we've uh, created the campaign, we're going to create a list. So ultimately, uh, lists are uh, data that you'll add to your campaign, and then we'll go ahead and look at uh, some of the settings as well. So this is one of our test servers. So you'll see uh, lots of previous campaigns on there. But uh, from the left-hand uh, side, I'm just going to uh, click campaigns, and I've got a couple of options at the top here. Um, the campaigns have got about 200 settings. Um, not all of them you'll need to use. Um, what we do is put in a default campaign with all the necessary settings for you to just start dialing straight away. So rather than adding a new campaign and to go through all those settings, we're just going to copy a campaign that's going to allow us to use the default one that we've built. So we just click copy campaign at the top and the first thing we'll be asked to do is to give the campaign an ID and typically that's a numeric value. Um, it can be anything you want. Um, most people choose numeric values in sequential order so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, call this campaign ID 500. Uh, campaign name needs to be something that you and agents are going to recognize so uh, you know, RTA or solar or energy. Um, in this case we're just going to call this uh, Safwood test. And then it's going to ask us what uh, campaign do we want to choose to copy all the settings from. So we're just going to use our default campaign, which is campaign 201. And I'm just going to press submit, and that's now created that campaign for us. If I just go back to the campaigns main and go all the way down to the bottom, you'll now see here we've got a campaign, Safford test with a list ID of uh, 500. And we're going to circle back to all the settings within the campaign shortly. So once you've created the campaign, the next sensible thing is that you're going to want to load data to it. So to do that on the left hand navigation pane, we're just going to click lists. And again, we've got lots and lots of lists from these demonstrations. And uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, add a new list. So again it's going to ask us to give a list ID. This is really important especially if you uh, buy buying uh, data sets from different providers or indeed from one provider. Um, to be able to check data performance and rationalize return on investment you'll want to be able to analyze the results so by giving your list individual IDs and then naming them just so that you can easily identify what they are where they've come from. Uh, you can uh, you can run reports on that quite easily. Um, so the list ID can be any number. Um, just again, I'm just going to select 500 just to say cons consistency, uh, and I'm going to give the list a name. So uh, you know we could call this PPI, you know, and uh, you know give it a date if we wanted to. Yeah, so it's a date that's elapsed. Um, and in description again, that can be anything that you want. So it could be you know uh, if you could uh, put in or make up a data supplier DTNA. So that could be a, a data supplier. Um, so we're able to see a list ID, which is a qualifier that's used at the back end of the dialer. Uh, list name, uh, so you can identify it, and uh, in this case, in list description, we're going to put a uh, made up data supplier. We now need to say which campaign that wants to be assigned to. So we're going to assign that to the uh, campaign that we just created, so 500, and we're going to set it to active. Click Submit. And that list has now been created. So if I now uh, just go back to show lists, right at the bottom here we've got uh, 500. So next thing we want to do is ultimately uh, load data to that as well. So if we click the uh, load new leads tab, we'll get uh, the uh, auto loader. So what we do here is we're going to browse for a file on the desktop. So it's something uh, data file that I've already uh, put on there, which is called demo data. And I'm just going to load that. Um, it's going to ask us which list do I want to load that data to. So I'm going to say 500. And you can see here that in the uh, list description. And it's going to ask us for a phone override code. Um, I'm just going to put uh, 44 in here for Great Britain. Um, what you will find, especially with CSV files, is sometimes that when you open a CSV file, it can strip out the leading zero. Um, by putting in a phone override code, it just means that when the dialer is calling, if it has lost the leading zero, it's not going to cause you a problem. In regards to uh, layout, we can uh, choose a couple of options. Um, 
standard format is uh, where you've matched the headers in your CSV uh, spreadsheet to the head expected headers in the dialer. Um, custom layout is what we're going to uh, choose from, and you can, use ch you can also uh, choose custom template. Custom template is useful where uh, if you're buying data in from different data providers and those data providers stick to specific headings, you can just match up those uh, headings in the CSV to the dialers once, save it as a template, and then when you get that file in again, it's much quicker and easier to load it. Well, we're going to use custom layout just so you can see what that's, uh, that's going to look like today. We've got some uh, lead duplicate checking. So we can say no duplicates, which is uh, what we're going to choose today because it's my mobile number that's in that list. And uh, if we did uh, deduplicate it, it would uh, it would lead to a very very short demonstration. Um, we can check for duplicates by uh, phone in that particular list. We can check for duplicates by phone in the particular campaign, which is the most popular because if you call somebody again, I'll just use a uh, the same example for the sake of consistency, uh, PPI you may want to then ring that customer back for uh, consumer energy and what you don't want to do is obviously uh, if they've said no to one product that's got no relation to another you don't want to suppress that data or well, if you did want to do that you could just check for duplicates uh, by the phone number in the entire system so we've got multiple options there um, so what I'm going to do now is I've selected custom layout, selected my file, I've said where it's going to I'm just going to press submit button and it's now just going to ask me to match some headers. So I've only put a couple of headers in the uh, data here. So I'm going to match the phone number field in the data file to phone number in the uh, in the dialer. Uh, title is going to title. Uh, for name in the spreadsheet is going to first name and we've got uh, surname going to last name. So that's matched everything up for me and I'm just going to click OK to pro process. You can see here it's loaded 19 good records and one bad. The one bad record ultimately is just the header. Uh, so we've got title, phone name, surname. So it's realised that that's actually not a record that's due to be loaded. So it's just excluded that. If I now go back to lists and we look at list 500, you can now see that we've got 19 records loaded in there and they'll have been loaded for uh, campaign 500. So that's how you create a campaign and load data to it. Very straightforward. What we're going to look at now is some of the uh, campaign settings. Uh, this is a very uh, highly configurable uh, dialer, so we're not going to go through them all now. We're just going to pick on a couple of pertinent ones. So I've clicked campaigns, and I'm going to click the campaign that I'm interested in, which is the one we've just created, which is campaign 500. And I'm going to click detail view just to expand it so we can uh, see that. So we can see at the top here we've got list ID and the campaign name, which is a sapphire test. If we wanted to give it you know, a further description, so we want to say... Uh, selling solar energy. We can just put some additional descriptions in there, that's not uh, necessary. Choose whether the list uh, the campaign is active or not. So if you're running multiple campaigns and one needs to be turned off in the morning, turned back on in the evening, very simple to do that. So we're just going to change that to yes for now. Um, web forms here, um, this is basically where we can actually uh, configure um, information to be posted from the dialer direct into your CRM or your workflow. There's a couple of ways we do that. Um, we can do it via API posts, so using PHP scripts, um, or we can actually do that via direct access um, from MySQL uh, via ODC, uh, ODBC bridging. Um, but ultimately, here if you want to move things like sales leads, appointments, direct from your dialer into a CRM, whether it's one of our CRMs or your own CRM, we can do that uh, in multiple uh, formats for you. Um, you can also see here we've got clo allow closes yes or no. This is really useful um, if you've got a high value product which takes a lot of phone calls to generate a lead for. Um, a lot of businesses will structure that to have you know where two or three lead generators working for one salesperson. So what this allows you to do is have uh, three lead generators. And when they uh, actually then uh, get a lead, they can hotkey that straight through to the salesperson, whether that's uh, they're sat next to them um, with an extension on this dialer or whether they're working remotely. It can just basically pass straight through to them for the uh, the salesperson then to uh, to close and progress that lead. Allow inbound and blended. Uh, so if you run any, uh, if you want if you want to run an inbound and outbound campaign, this is where we set that up. So if you're running uh, a business where you're going to have a lot of call-ins or you're doing marketing and you want that to go direct to agent, you would turn that on. And when people uh, call the DDI, the direct dial-in for the dialer, that will then find an available agent and route that call, uh, route the call straight through to them and flag that it's an inbound call. 
um, if our agents are actually on the phone, it will hold that customer um, in a queue until it's available. So this actually works uh, as an integrated phone system as well as a uh, fully hosted predictive dialer. Okay, looking a little bit further down uh, the list here, we've got list order. Um, this is useful depending on uh, how you uh, choose to add data. Um, some of the solutions that we provide, um, our customers are adding a, a certain amount of data to uh, campaigns and agents on a daily basis. Um, so you can, the new data will always go to uh, the bottom of a list. So if you imagine it in uh, Excel spreadsheet format, um, your new data is going to be at the bottom. So we can basically choose which uh, order the dialer works through that list. So they can work from up, so we can work from uh, bottom to top. So that would mean it would uh, start dialing the new data first. Or we can work down. Or it is lots of settings. You know, we can kind of say work up and every third call is new. Work down and every fifth call is new. There's lots of ways that you can uh, use that. You can randomize the list order completely as well. Um, we typically recommend just using the uh, the up or down function. Um, it's a fully uh, Ofcom compliant dialer as well, so you can see here the drop lockout time. Drop lockout time is if uh, you overpace the dialer and uh, drop a call. Um, it basically means that that call can't be ran back for uh, 72 hours, and that's just uh, to make sure that uh, the dialer is uh, Ofcom compliant. Um, next, uh, next item of interest here is the call count limit. So uh, we'll look at lead recycling shortly. And lead recycling is uh, if it's an answer machine, how long do you want the dialer to wait until an answer machine is reattempted, and how many times uh, as a maximum do you want that to be uh, attempted? Um, call count limit is uh, a way of setting a hard limit on the total attempts. Um, for a lead rather than just the uh, attempts per outcome. So, for example, um, you could get two answer machines, uh, two no replies, five engaged tones, um, and ultimately that lead might be called 10 or 12 times before it reaches the uh, the limit for uh, answer machines, say five. So, by setting a call count limit, you can say when a lead has been attempted five times, irrespective of the outcome, stop uh, attempting that. We can go a few steps further with this solution, which is uh, if you want to recycle data after a longer period of time, so once it's reached its uh, target count limit or particular outcome, say not interested, if you want to refresh those back to new data after a certain number of days, say three months, we can build all that, uh, all that in for you as well. So just moving down to this green section is a very important uh, part of the uh, dialer here, which is dial method. So dial method is where you can choose how you want the dialer to work. Um, the two most popular um, is uh, on a ratio limit. So a ratio is ultimately where you'll set line to agent. So for every agent that is waiting for a call, you can choose how many lines the dialer is actually going to dial. So a two to one ratio. If you had two agents waiting on two to one, it would make four calls. Um, you will need someone who's looking after that on a quite regular basis as uh, as contact rates increase as you go into the evenings and more people are answering. You know, a two or three to one ratio uh, would probably be overpacing the dialer and you'll uh, start to go through uh, your abort rate. Well, that's a very uh, adaptive way of working uh, when there's a human sat there uh, working to it. Um, that hard limit, that hard limit is where the dialer will look to see how many, how long agents are waiting between calls, and it will start to increase or decrease the number of calls to make sure that the uh, the call wait time um, is reduced to as low as possible. And manual dial, manual dial can be used where if there's some pre-call prep that needs to be done, so perhaps uh, you know, when a record pops up on screen, it wants to uh, pop the CRM record, which we can do for you. So if you've got using your own CRM, we can uh, pop a record on that. You might want to look through the customer history or research the company and then choose when you want to dial. And that's when you'd use the, uh, the manual ratio. Um, there's, uh, you're able to set where we've got drop percent limit. Uh, Three percent is the UK Ofcom compliant limit. So if you're using uh, an adaptive uh, dialing method, when that reaches three percent uh, aborted calls, that'll then obviously start to slow itself down just to make sure that you stay within uh, stay within the Ofcom regulations. Further down here, we've got um, next agent call. So next agent call is. Um, who gets the call when it comes through from the dialer? So the dialer's made seven calls, and uh, let's say three of them answers who gets them. Typically, people use the uh, the longest wait time, so the agent who's been waiting longest for a call will get that as it comes through. Um, we can kind of just put all this, uh, lots of uh, 
configurable options on here, so fewest calls. And something that's very useful is campaign ranking. So campaign ranking is where if you've got agents within a campaign who are uh, stronger um, salespeople or lead generators or appointment setters, and um, you're going through a period, say during the day or if a uh, football matches on where contact rate is really down and nobody's answering the phone what you might choose to do is give uh, each of those agents a campaign rank so uh, campaign rank one is your strongest agents and uh, two is say uh, your weakest that basically means that when a call comes through the dialer will look for the uh, strongest sales agents and route the calls through to them first so that just gives you an a, a chance to maximize your data in uh, in periods where the contact rate might be down and uh, there's nobody answering the phone a dial timeout limit is excellent for uh, configuring how aggressively you want the dialer to work. So dial timeout limit is if the uh, phone is ringing at the customer's end, uh, how long does the dialer ring that for until it moves on? So things like um, no answers, the dialer will disposition that automatically and move on to the next record. So after 30 seconds, that would take effect. You can reduce that to uh, you know 15 seconds so that when the dialer is placing calls, it's moving on to the the, uh, the next record if there's no answer much quicker. Um, that will get through your data um, much faster in the day where your, your answer rate is lower, but um, in the evening where people are at home, it's a, it's a great way to control how aggressively you want to pace that dialer. Um, campaign caller ID. So this is the direct dial that uh, we can display. Um, Ofcom regulations state that whatever uh, caller ID you display, so what people see on their phone when you call them, uh, that's got to be able to route back through to your dialer. Um, one of the huge advantages of our dialer is um, caller line identity localization. So if you're calling uh, specific areas, you know Manchester, Liverpool, Warrington, it, it doesn't matter where, we can actually present a uh, area code. Um, that is specific to the area. So if you ring in Manchester, it will present 0161. If you ring Liverpool, it will be 0151. Or Warrington would be 01925. Um, the way we can help people uh, structure whether that's worthwhile or not is we can do some uh, basic analysis on your data, see how many of your records fall into each one of the area codes, and then typically people will choose you know the top ten um, where you haven't got a direct dial uh, for a particular area code we can just default it back to a, a standard direct dial. Um, the, purpose, the whole purpose of that is that businesses and customers are far more likely to answer a call from an area code that's local to them. Uh, the industry standard is about a 30% increase on their contact rates, so that is a, a hugely advantageous feature um, of this dialer. And just looking at a couple of other areas, um, answer machine message. So uh, if you want to leave an um, answer machine message, so let's just say you're doing a uh, broadcast to uh, alert your customers to um, a change in terms or a new promotion, and you know it's important to leave them uh, a message. Um, we supply a few schools that if they uh, need to contact um, parents to let them know that school's going to be closed. Um, if it hits a voicemail, you can choose to actually... Uh, leave a message on the uh, answer machine as well so it's a very very good option there as well um, also turns dialer into uh, almost like a, a, a voice broadcast system as well um, just going to skip past a lot of this because this is some of the fine detail stuff that um, you will use in the future but uh, as you get uh, more used to uh, using the dialer this is when you would start to look at uh, some of those controls in a bit more detail um, last sections we're going to look is at uh, the bottom here so uh, we CRM pop um, that basically is uh, you know if we need to uh, pop um, a CRM record at the moment that the dialer connects um, to a customer we can actually uh, do that uh, through this section here um, and also um, blind monitoring so it's possible to listen to live agent calls um, and that says whether the agent is told whether someone's actually listening to them or not 99.9% .9 of uh, people leave the, uh, the blind monitoring uh, notification for agents uh, off. Uh, obviously, agent behaviour does uh, does change when uh, when they're being monitored or not. So that's the whistle stop tour of the campaign section. What we're going to look at now is uh, lead recycling. Um, so lead recycling is extremely important. So I've just clicked lead recycle on the left hand side, and I'm just going to go down now to uh, 500, which is the campaign that we've created, and it's just uh, 
we've got this section here. So lead recycling is for things like answer machines, no answers, um, busies, um, anything that you want to uh, call again. This is where we uh, we we ultimately uh, can configure that. So when we uh, create a campaign, it'll give you uh, the default statuses, which is uh, you can see here we've got lots of A's for answer machines, and we can add and remove those as we need to. Um, so we can basically just go to lead recycle, and uh, once we just go back to this section here, click on 500. Okay, we can now uh, we can start to add these. So for example, um, we want to uh, add answer machine as something that will be recycled, and we're going to say that you know after uh, 14,400 seconds, four hours. Um, we attempt that record and attempt it for a maximum of five times. And you can see that now we've just added that condition. We might then want to say um, busy. So uh, busy auto is that the dialers uh, picked up that it was an engaged tone. Someone's clearly there, so it might be that you want to uh, try that uh, that person just 120 seconds later you know, to a maximum of you know again five times and we can just keep keep adding those conditions and what you see here is leads at limit so if you then want to see how many of your leads within that uh, campaign have reached that limit of five attempts that'll tell you there and you can toggle those rules uh, off and on so you're able to get a total control over uh, how your uh, how your data is recycled again we can go much further than that so if these leads such as not interested that is a completed record but something that you want to reattempt in 90 days um, we can actually set further parameters so that your, your data gets recycled for you uh, as well next section is uh, hotkeys so again we select uh, the campaign that we're interested in um, we can set hotkeys on a keypad so if you want to just press one to disposition a call as answer machine it's a really productive way to uh, disposition calls when you look at the agent interface which is on the video below this one on the uh, on the web page what you'll see is um, we actually can put configurable hotkey buttons on the agent interface of things like answer machines no answers anything like that you can just press a button actually on screen and it will uh, disposition that call very quickly for you but again there's a couple of options there uh, the final thing that we're going to look at is pause codes so pause codes is uh, for the person that really wants to uh, micromanage the uh, micromanage the campaign um, this is where basically you can just uh, add some codes so when an agent wants to pause themselves i.e. make themselves not available for calls they've then got to enter a reason as to why they're doing that so here there's just a few defaults so uh, you know it's agent break, lunch, technical support, a uh, comfort break billable um, if you want to if you're on an outsource campaign and you're charging a client for your time you can say that you're not going to bill them for pauses you are going to bill them for uh, unavailable time or you're going to bill them half and uh, those reports can then be pulled out of the uh, dialer again this is a, it's a MySQL back-ended dialer so um, what we're able to do is uh, put some very uh, user-friendly uh, interfaces on that such as Microsoft Access and Navicat which is going to allow you to build uh, ad hoc SQL reports to get the information you need and uh, that kind of coaching and training uh, is, what, is what we can offer you as well so that is the uh, whistle stop tour of the uh, campaign section for Safwood's hosted predictive dialer. I um, would encourage you at this stage to look at the agent interface uh, just to see how those campaign settings affect it. And once you've seen the agent interface, uh, go ahead and then uh, we'll look at the uh, reporting section, which is us looking at this administration interface, but some of the real time reports plus some of the uh, bespoke dashboards that we can customize for you as well. If you've got any questions, you can contact us on 0845 241. 1008 or email us at sales at safwood which is s-a-double-f-w-o-o-d safwood.co.uk thank you